those stupid little films meant more to me than any big budget Hollywood extravaganza because they gave me hope God. that with a little allowance... You okay? No, I'm not okay. A little ingenuity and a little stolen time with my dad's old wind-up movie camera, I could make movies too, and I did. Boy, did. The new film 52577 is named after a significant date in pop culture history when the original Star Wars movie premiered. A teenager who lived in Wadsworth at the time was one of the first people in the world to see the film. And now Patrick Reed Johnson is sharing that incredible story which took decades to make and is now finally being released. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning. So you got to meet uh, Steven Spielberg as a teenager. How did that happen and, and what was that experience like? Well, that's the uh, that's the whole uh, plot of the film that I'd have to give away to tell you exactly how it happened. But it, let's put put it this way: I had a uh, a lot of heroes um, in my little hometown of you know Wadsworth and the town I went to high school in Gurney and Waukegan, where I went to see all my movies because there was only that was the closest theater, the Genesee. But there were my mother in particular decided that I needed to get the hell out of town uh, and chase my dreams. And when I was a little too frightened to reach out or go she <laughs> made a call she didn't know anybody but she was uh, <laughs> an incredibly um, uh, persuasive human being and she made a call to a very special human being sort of the obi-wan kenobi of my life a guy named herb lightman who was the editor of american cinematographer magazine which was kind of the magazine i had under my bed at the time so <laughs> wow. uh, and he just took me under his wing and some really magical occurrences happened and March of 1977, the, the spring when two little films called Star Wars and Close Encounters of the Third Kind were in post-production. So when you met Steven Spielberg in 1977, I mean, he was a young filmmaker back then. Uh, you know, what, what was the connection? I mean, did you connect because you were both uh, interested in film? You were both, you know, young guys trying we, to get your actually, foot in the door? Yeah, we sort of connected by accident. I was actually being brought to the visual effects company that was doing all the you know, trick photography, as we called it at the time, for Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And I wanted to meet Douglas Trumbull. I didn't have any ambition or awareness that I was going to get a chance to meet Steven Spielberg. But Douglas was not in the facility when we got there for the interview. And, and then Steven walked in and said, oh, hey, Herb. They, they knew each other from uh, other coverage of other movies Stephen had done. And he goes, come on, let me show you guys around. So we got a personal tour of the entire effects facility by Stephen himself. And then we sat for a few hours in his office and listened to him talk about the film and uh, did a sort of impromptu interview right then and there. And uh, there's a very funny scene when I first meet him while he's shooting the uh, the cloud tank uh, material for all those, you know, those giant cumulus clouds coming around Devil's Tower. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know it's him. Nobody knows it's him. We're in, a, we're in a dark room, and this guy that looks like he's 12 years old comes in and sits right in front of my field of view. And I'm like, oh, it must be a PA. He Maybe he's watching to see how the lighting looks, or he's going to – I don't know. I didn't know who this guy was. And all of a sudden, the guy sitting in front of me yells, cut, that's not working. <laughs> and everybody looks, and they kind of turn, and they look right in my direction. It's like, I didn't say – I yeah. point to him, right? <laughs> and, and, and he's got his back to me, right? And then he turns around. And goes, hey Herb, and it's Steve. And it's got, he's got a Jaws cap on, and he's got a, 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 he's got wow. a, two bottles of two bottles of Pepsi. And he goes, hey kid, you want a Pepsi? Oh, <laughs> it was like a, it was like a, the perfect Pepsi commercial for right. now. Which, anyway, it was fantastic, and so we spent the day with Steve, and I ended up working on the mothership. By the wow. time it was over, I was in the model shop working with the with you know the guys I really related to the the, the great. model makers. Yeah. Well, I can imagine seeing you're just looking at a small cut of what was to be Star Wars. I mean, I remember seeing it as a kid and just being overwhelmed. I'd seen nothing like it. When you are 15 and you go see this stuff that no one's seen before, did you know that this is something that's I've never seen before? Uh, absolutely. And the funniest thing is, is that you have to understand that when I saw it, it was not at all complete. There was yeah. no, no John Williams music, some temp classical stuff here and there, a couple of Ben Burt sound effects, but mostly production sound. You could still hear David Prowse, you know, you weren't a mini mercy missing this time, you know? <laughs> I mean, and, 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 you know, you could see the grips outside the Millennium Falcon cockpit shaking it, <laughs> the screen. I mean, the very first shot, no crawl, no music, wow. no, just the big blue screen and all of a sudden this ship just going yeah and going and going and going and in silence but it was wow. like what the you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. By, the, 
we, we, when we walked in, I was told before we came in by her, because I'm just, you know, maybe you should go to Universal Studios tomorrow because I'm just going to go interview. <laughs> I'm interviewing these college kids that are making a movie that, get this, it's called Star Wars. And he laughed. <laughs> and, and that was the silliest thing. Ever. And he says, he says, it, and they don't know what they're doing. It sounds like it's a disaster. Just go to Universal and take the tour. You'll learn more, right? Wow. I said, yeah, I think I'll tag along. And they had been broken into like two days earlier and all of their photographs and transparencies had been stolen. So he, John Dykstra had nothing to show Herb. And he's like, well, how am I going to do an article full of pictures if you don't have any pictures? And well, well, I might be able to scrounge some up. And you know what? Let me just show you a little bit of the movie. So he oh, took us up my screening gosh. room and started showing the rough wow. cut and he couldn't stop. He just kept going, well, this next part's kind of cool. Let's watch that too. And the <laughs> guys just kept saying this next part, this next part, until the Death Star blew up. Wow. So, it was oh, incredible. Yeah. Spoiler alert. So so your yeah. movie, <laughs> your, your, your movie 52577 then, is uh, a, a recreation of that uh, period that you went through? What, what's it about? Yeah, it, it actually starts in the uh, the fall of 1976. Um, and it's it's about how this goofy guy, Pat Johnson, from Wadsworth, Illinois, population 750, um, is is sort of on the verge of wanting to get the hell out of town and go to Hollywood and chase his dreams, but he doesn't know anybody. He hasn't. He, none of this adventure has happened yet, and 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 he's making too many movies. He's taken over the whole house. He's shooting things in the backyard in the basement. He's you know the pools filled with fake blood for shark attacks, and and he's kind of expanding beyond the boundaries of the studio he created his house, and his friends just kind of go along with it because they think it's cute and fun and something to do. But he really believes he's got a shot if he can just get out there right mm -hmm. but getting out there means leaving and leaving means leaving everything he knows and everything he loves and everything that loves him maybe more than he knows mm -hmm. and then he meets a girl a girl who's never going to leave town who works at solo plastic cup factory with her mom and they, they <laughs> the whole, you know, her dad works at johnson motors yeah. down in Waukegan, and they're they're staying but they're madly in love oh. and all for the wrong reason, he makes a, a terrible mistake when he first sets eyes on her that he doesn't realize until it's too late. Um, cool. And it and it's about leaving. It's about you know following your dreams. All right, don't tell us too much information here. We want to go see the film. It's available <laughs> uh, for pre-order on Amazon. It starts streaming on Showtime December the fifteenth. You can get more on uh, Patrick on all the socials. Patrick, thank you so Thanks, much for Patrick. joining us. Thank you very much. I yeah. really appreciate it. And please go see it. Or, yeah, it sounds I'll send fun. it to you. <laughs> sounds great.